Welcome into Picks and Parlays, Better's Edge. We've got week eight NFL football. I'm Hannah Mears. That's Craig Trapp. That's Andrew Filipponi. They had a better week, I will admit, than I did last <laughs> week. I tried to take the opposite of what you guys did. It burned me, but did really That's well right, the we week before. Up on her. You did gang up on me. I know. I was dead wrong, especially Don't that doubt. Lions game. <laughs> But that's okay. Moving forward, we're gonna we're gonna try to get a better week this week, and we're gonna start with Jaguars Steelers. Are the Steelers turning a new leaf here, Pony? They are now a home underdog, though, against the Jaguars heading into Acrisur Stadium. That two and a half number. Do you like the Steelers being an underdog in this one? Yeah, because you could take them on the money line now and make even more money. That's what I would do with this game. I like them again, back to back weeks against Jacksonville. The Steelers' defense right now, T.J. Watt is a one-man wrecking crew. Highsmith has his partner in crime as an edge rusher. I see them getting a lot of pressure on Trevor Lawrence in this game. Look, for everything Jacksonville did right in the first half against New Orleans, if a backup tight end catches a wide-open pass in the end zone, they might blow that game. So I don't think because of what happened there, their line is a little inflated. I don't think they deserve to be a favorite. I think the Steelers again win on the money line and push their record shockingly to five and two with a negative point differential. I actually agree with this one, Craig. I want to get your thoughts first, though, on the Steelers. Well, they say when you're playing Mike Tomlin, you play him as a dog, you fade him as a favorite. So with that theory, I mean, it's been very good the last yeah, few been. years. I'm taking the Steelers as under. I will take the points here, and I actually would buy it up to three because, you know, just so many games in in a field goal. But like you said, if the Saints catch that, and you know they were going for two there, um, and they win that game, it's probably a pick em game. So we get an extra two and a half. Like I said, I would buy the half. Take it at three. I think the Steelers win. Tomlin, as an underdog, stays hot. I like the Steelers as well for a lot of the same reasons that you talked about. So I'll go ahead and give my best prop in this one. Look at George Pickens. He's been fantastic clicking with Pickett, especially the past two games, over 100 receiving yards. His receiving yards in this one are sitting at 52 and a half. And I think it's because people don't trust the Steelers offense. And the odds makers sure as heck don't when this line, I feel like, is sitting so low at this point of where we're recording on a Wednesday. So George Pickens over 52 and a half receiving yards. The Jaguars are giving up the most passing yards in the league this season. So I think with that stat, Pickett and Pickens could take advantage of that. In this 52 and a half mark, you can get two passes to George Pickens and go over this truthfully. That's where the Steelers have been utilizing him. And I think it's um, no secret that in the four games that the Steelers have won so far, Kenny Pickett hit George Pickens for that over 100 receiving yard mark. So if Pickens and Pickett are connecting, <laughs> then George, then the Steelers are winning. It's not rocket science yep. here. So take George Pickens over 52 and a half receiving yards in that one. Another team that's been great on defense, when we talk about actually both of these teams, we can talk about defensive players, the Rams and Cowboys. This is at home in Dallas. The Cowboys coming off of a bye week. And they're six and a half point favorites at home. Craig, what are your thoughts on this one? I just don't believe in the Cowboys still. I mean, if you take away some – I mean, they've played a very easy schedule early on, and a lot of those games where they scored a ton on defense uh, made their points look good, like, oh, maybe their offense is good. No, their offense has struggled. Um, I'm taking the Rams plus the points. Let's also think the Rams stopped the Steelers. I don't know what ha what anybody was looking at. That was the stop. Um, I was on the right side because I love the Steelers as my best bet, so I was happy – but if the Rams get the ball, I think the Rams have a chance to win that game. And then what would this line be? So I think we're getting extra line value here. Give me the Rams. I think they have a shot to win this game, actually. Mike McCarthy off a bye. I don't think that's a positive. Interesting, Pony. Are you on the same side here? Yeah, Craig and I must have uh, swapped notes <laughs> before the show. I'm usually an underdog better, and I definitely am in this game as well. The Rams also had Maher, who came over from Dallas after he missed all those extra points in the Tampa game. And he got in his own head again against the Steelers, missed short field goals. He was cut by the Rams this week. So I do think they'll get an upgrade in those situations, too, where Sean McVay will take points on fourth down. Six and a half is a lot when you consider you've got Cooper Cup and Puka Nakua, 2-2 Atwell as well. And we're still dealing with the Diggs injury with the Cowboys. I would not be surprised if between now and the next time we talk, Dallas is traded for another defensive back. But I don't think that that helps them in this game. I don't think the player will be available by then. So I like with those wide receivers, the Rams, to at least keep this game close, Hannah. 
very close. I think it'll be a close game, but I think it'll be low scoring. I don't really have faith in either of these offenses, only because even with the names that you had just said, Puka Nakua, Cooper Cup, Tuzu Atwell, the Rams still couldn't get the better of the Steelers, and Puka Nakua was tearing apart that defense early on in that game. So even if one of them are a factor in this game, I still think that Micah Parsons is still going to be able to get to the quarterback, especially being well-rested. And I don't trust the Cowboys offense. I don't. So I don't expect them to be lighting up the scoreboard after a bye. I don't expect the Rams to be doing that either. I think you could see their receivers being effective as they have been in every game. But will that convert to touchdowns? Well, it didn't against the Steelers. So what makes me think that they could do that against the Cowboys? I don't necessarily trust it. I'm going to take the under 45 and a half in that game. Browns and Seahawks, though. Let's move to this game. Back in Seattle, the Browns have a mess on their hands when it comes to quarterback. Deshaun Watson is looking like an even worse play by them as the season goes on. P.J. Walker could be the starting quarterback again in this game. Pony, I have to start with you. I feel like you could go on a rant, a tangent about the Browns right now. You're sure. stirring over there. So we'll go ahead and just let you start to take well, this one. I, look, I, I do think that the Watson injury is a blessing in disguise for them in the short term because big picture, you've got a $230 million contract. It's all guaranteed. You've got someone. There's so much nebulous information about his injury. They were talking about it being a concussion during the game on uh, Sunday against the Colts. He cleared, but he didn't go back in. They didn't say anything about his shoulder. Now I've got Adam Schefter using all kinds of high-tech terms to describe what's going on here. It's very, very cloudy. Uh, But I do think when Walker plays, they get to the basics of what they do the best, which is play great defense and run the ball. They don't put too much on the quarterback's play, and I do think that's a formula to go to Seattle and beat them. They have the corners to match up with the Seahawks wide receivers. We'll see if DK Metcalf even plays in this game, and they definitely have the pass rush to get to Geno Smith, who is not a very mobile quarterback. What's the line again? It's a field goal. It's at a field goal. I'm going to take the Browns' money line. I think they went out right in Seattle. Okay, Craig, I know you have similar thoughts about the yeah, Browns in this one. I love the Browns. Um, I think the Browns What are we are, doing here? we got the I, I same know, picks. I know, I said. It's unbelievable. I, 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 it's it my, worked last week for to us. To me, Miles we Garrett. went 5-2 on this show. Maybe put Miles <laughs> Garrett at quarterback. Or just punt on second down or third. It's like the CFL, you punt on third down because – Cleveland just has to not turn the ball over, which they did a bunch and still found a way to win, uh, thanks to Miles Garrett, the, you know, the strip sack uh, for a touchdown, uh, the block field goal. I mean, he was unbelievable. Um, Seattle doesn't doesn't block well. Uh, this spells big trouble, and the Browns just have to run the ball and punt. Run the ball and punt. Eventually, they'll score some field goals. I think it's going to be low scoring. Seattle scored uh, lower than we thought the last two weeks. I think this is another. This Cleveland team is for real on defense. Give me Cleveland. I'll take the points just in case because we see so many uh, tight games. But uh, Seattle, no tough place to play, but I think uh, Cleveland gets it done here. I'm playing devil's advocate again for a second straight week here. Uh I'm going the Seahawks minus three in this one. And the reason is when the Seahawks have lost games this season, they haven't been by big margins. They are right in every single one of these games. And somehow Geno Smith and the Seahawks figure things out. They always seem like the lucky team at (laughs) some point. And against the Browns, I feel like a team having some sort of good luck against them. It's just the Browns browning is what it is. And I know what you said about P.J. Walker and getting back to basics. And though I agree with that, I just think there's a lot of issues here with the Browns game planning around him. When you have a guy like Watson that you're hoping for every week. Yes, the Browns have a really good defense, but can you limit the Seahawks at home with that 12th man in that environment? I'm just going to say I think it's going to be a close game. But if I had to pick, I'll take the Seahawks by a field goal in this one. I've Mm -hmm. gone back and forth so much so since you guys like the browns i'm just going to go ahead and play devil's advocate it worked so good last and week. i i can make some sort of an argument yeah no it was bad last See, week i think you're in but your head nobody, right now nobody nobody yeah i know i have to get at least one over you guys right nobody expected the lions game to be what it was and no. we'll get there we eventually on this side Easy. of the room that bad that you did we not pick them that bad for the yeah. but you did Tony. not think it was replay. going to be that play back the tape we you were did very not positive think it was going to be that all right Bengals and 49ers you guys also um <laughs> liked the 49ers to lose i believe last week as well well the Bengals pick two 
No, okay. I was on the wrong side. Okay, the I wrong got the, side of that I one. I got the okay. Vikings outright. Duh. I know you did. Yes, you had that one. The Bengals five and a half point underdogs, though, heading into San Fran. Uh, how do you feel about Cincinnati right now? Who are they? Do they have the identity yet? Can Ask they bounce the back? I know here. that's where we're going, Craig. Hmm. Let's be full deep sigh here. before you. Say <laughs> I'm from Cincinnati, a Bengals fan. Um, this is tough. This is a very tough spot because you're getting the Niners after two straight losses. Now, they are banged up. I just think this is a good spot for the Bengals. Uh, coming off a bye, Joe Burrow is finally – we saw it before the bye where he's starting to move around, and that's the key to any quarterback. You can't just sit back there at now as these great defenses. I think Burrow and them, I think they can win this game. I'm going to take the points. Um what is it, third, fourth straight underdog here. I, I just think the Bengals are a good spot for them against the San Francisco team that, you know, looks beatable right now. Tony, you're laughing over uh, here. I'm I'm going to make a very bold prediction on this show. I think this is, has the potential to be Purdy's last start. Wow. I think I think we could see it going in a direction the downfall where, of where Brock Darnold Purdy. becomes their starting quarterback because I saw Purdy miss throws at the end of the Minnesota game, and you could see it on Shanahan's face that he was very, very frustrated with the way his quarterback played. The guy had never lost a regular season game. His only defeat was in that NFC Championship game where he got injured. And here come the Bengals off a bye. The calf injury for Burrow has gotten better. Their defense, especially their front seven, have stepped up. We don't know about Trent Williams. That left tackle injury is massive. We know that the uh, stress fracture that Debo Samuel has will keep him out of this game. Thank God Christian McCaffrey came back and played, but it wasn't enough. It really wasn't. And uh, confidence in the mental aspect of the game, such a fragile thing. I see self-doubt in Brock Purdy these last two weeks that had not existed for the previous dozen starts of his career. And I just wonder now if it's starting to occur to him that he was Mr. Irrelevant and really should not be in this position and can make mistakes. He looks like a human quarterback now. And I did not like the way he bounced back from an adverse game against the Browns against Minnesota. And I think he's going to have a bad game again. I like Cincinnati for sure, plus five and a half. Two yeah, straight everyone... games on turnovers. That you know yeah. they've lost the turnover battle two straight games. You can't win in the NFL losing turnover battle. That McCaffrey fumble early in the game I think really changed that game. So that being said, turnovers did plague them for the first time this season. But I think they have the ability to clean that up. And why is because they have a guy like Christian McCaffrey that they can rely on in the run. I would probably agree with you guys looking at the Bengals in this one and maybe taking them straight up if not close. But I think it could be on the higher score side and I look at the Niners team total in this one because I think you might be getting it at a little bit of a good value because of all of the things you had just said about Brock Purdy and looking vulnerable not like a bot anymore everyone was calling him a robot at times mm -hmm. and thought the NFL was in control I'm going to say the Niners team total over 25 and a half points up until last week or the last two weeks, I should say, the Niners were putting up 30-plus points a game in every single game. Now, I know Debo Samuel's out, but I do think that offense can still do a lot. And had they not have given up two, two interceptions in Vikings territory, I think that could have been a different story for them last week. So I'm going to go ahead and say that the, the best bet I have in this one is looking at the Niners team total, but I do think the the Bengals can keep this one close, especially off of a bye, because we finally see the Niners looking human, mm -hmm. and I think that's what people have been looking for for a while. So it could be the rise of Joe Burrow this season and the fall of Brock Purdy. We will see. Chargers and Bears, another interesting quarterback situation. <laughs> and Tyson Bagent, a Division II quarterback, stepping in for the Chicago Bears. Pony, your thoughts? Well, he it was actually for them and the Bears, it was a perfect matchup because of the Garoppolo injury. So Brian Hoyer played. And so the ask or the demand out of the quarterback was not as high. He made pretty good decisions with the ball. Foreman had a big game as a running back, and they were able to breeze right through the Raiders. It's a totally different situation. I mean, the Chargers do have a reputation for making every game closer than it needs to be. But now you're facing Justin Herber on the road. Uh, Khalil Mack against his old team. Yeah, I think that we see a Division II kid look like what he was, an undrafted rookie free agent in this matchup. I'm going to take the Chargers minus eight and a half. I never feel good about betting the Chargers with a big number, but in this matchup, it's such a mismatch of quarterbacks. It wasn't last week because it was backup versus backup. Yeah, Craig, what are your thoughts? I can't take Brandon Staley. Like, uh, I, <laughs> yeah, that's just where it comes down to. I mean, he is just a terrible coach. Like, I mean, 
there's just some guys that aren't – they're great coordinators, and they get to the head coaching side, and they're out of their league. And he is out of his league. They have all kinds of weapons. This team should be one of the best offenses in the league, but they continue to just shoot themselves in the foot. Not necessarily all because of him. Sometimes it's the players not, you know. Sure. But I cannot give him – more than a touchdown. I'm going to take the Bears. I think this is actually an upgrade as far as because the it simplifies things for the Bears. They know they got to lean on the run game and short passes. And I think the defense stepped up last week. I think it does it again this week. I don't know how. You know, it's like one of those games. I don't know how, but the Bears somehow cover. Pony, you talked about the Raiders and their quarterback situation. Well, what impressed me was a Division II quarterback coming in against that Raiders defense, who has been pretty much the only thing they can rely on Mm -hmm. at times this season. He was 21 for 29, 162 yards, and a touchdown while rushing for 24 yards. I understand he probably had a lot of momentum and things to prove coming into this one. But if he can keep that type of simplified performance against the Chargers, I think the Bears can keep it closer than that eight and a half mark. I do. And I think until we see him really have a game where he looks like a Division II quarterback, Mm -hmm. I think it's harder to plan for him in this one for the Chargers. And Staley hasn't been a good coach so far this season. So will he be able to outplay a Bears team that looks totally different because you are no longer relying on, okay, if we stop Justin Fields from doing X, Y, and Z, we can beat the Bears. Now it's... Well, what are they going to do? Are they going to throw the ball? Are they going to rely on the run? So I think the Bears have a bit of an advantage coming into this one, having a new quarterback against the Chargers team who we haven't been able to rely on the coaching. So that's going to be my argument for them. If you're on the Chargers side, though, I would maybe look at a win margin in that one because I don't know about that eight and a half mark only because we've talked about them being in really, really close games. (laughs) Your best bets, though. Do you have anything that you want to double down on? Anything you want to give this week that we haven't looked at? I have three best bets this week. I have a side, a total, and a prop. I don't think I've had a prop best bet in like two or three years. But we saw the San Francisco team struggle to stop the pass. Jamar Chase, I mean, Jordan Addison was unbelievable. Yep. Jamar Chase, I don't, it's not out yet, but it'll probably be in that four and a half to six and a half range. I think he gets double digits receptions and double digit or triple digit yards. So I would take him over on those yards and over on the receptions. Jamar Chase and the Bengals, I think, are going to say, hey, you couldn't stop us a lot. You couldn't stop the Vikings pass. And the Bengals have way more weapons and a better quarterback. Uh, Give me uh, Jamar Chase over receptions and over on his passing yards. All right, Pony, your best bet. So I'm going to – it's two bets off of one game. It's the same (laughs) – it's the same idea, but I just want to spread the wealth here. Washington and Philadelphia, for whatever reason, the commanders always play the Eagles close. And, as I've pointed out on this show multiple times, there's this weird trend in the NFL when a team blows another team out or has this big, huge win, they stink the next week. And so the Eagles in front of all of America handle the Dolphins, shut down their offense. What a gigantic win. They're back. They're going to the Super Bowl. San Francisco lost. The Lions got killed. The Eagles, they're the team to beat again. Watch them go to Washington and struggle. So two things you can do here. Your biggest bet should be on the Commanders getting, I think, six and a half. And then your smaller bet should be on Washington to win the game outright because I think they're a very live dog. They go for two at the end of the first game this year. They're, they go to they win the game. They don't go to overtime. Maybe they win. And then last year they beat them. So there's just great history with the Commanders against the Eagles, and I think it's a definite letdown spot for Philly. I'm just going to go ahead and double down on that George Pickens receiving yards mark. Look at that at 52 and a half. I just think it's too beautiful, especially with it's Deontay. It's so low. It's almost it's too good so to be true. It's so low. It's too good to be true. So keep an eye on that. And if you can get it early, get it as early as you possibly can so it's as low as it is. Deontay Johnson being back, we saw how much more effective Pickett to Pickens can be because it gives you another receiver out there to have to worry about if you're an opposing defense. <laughs> if you look back at the stats when the Steelers are winning, it's when George Pickens is successful and his receiving yards are over 100. Take this at 52. Two and a half. I think nobody has faith in Kenny Pickett anymore and what he can do with his receivers, and that's why you're seeing these totals sit so low. Week eight of NFL football action. This is Picks and Parlays Better's Edge. Tune in with us on a weekly basis and download that new Picks and Parlays app for more best bets.